David, and I'm joined here with Mike at eLogic, and we have a really big topic today. We're going to discuss how to win back your aftermarket parts and service business. Now, Mike, thanks for jumping in and joining me on this topic. You spend a ton of time talking to customers, and I know you actually sort of take them through an informal survey. So let's actually dive into that part first and tell me about how you see the customer's feedback around how they're performing in the, in the market. Great, David, glad to do it. And what we're going to talk about is basically a, how companies are trying to shift from what they would define as product centric into a full life cycle services model. So the three questions are pretty simple. I'll ask, and these are the senior leaders in these organizations, and I'll say, how do you rate yourself on your product quality? And generally, we're talking to market leaders and strong players in their industries, and they're going to rate themselves as a nine or around right. a nine anyhow. And I'll say, how do you rate your product sales execution? That is the original product sale. Numbers are still going to be pretty high for these dominant players, and that would put them in sevens and eights, usually sometimes higher. I'll ask the third question, and it's the teaser question for how well are you doing as a services company, and that will be, how well are you maximizing your aftermarket potential? Right. So here are the scores, eight, nine, seven to nine, three to four. That's and there's amazing. the gap. We're yeah. getting this several point gap between how these companies think they're doing as product companies as compared to being a full services company. So summarizing, building great quality products, great on the sales execution of the original sale, the aftermarket or how they're servicing that customer after they're saying we're down in the three to five category. Yeah, a lot left on the table is what they're saying. We wish we were better at this as we are in these other aspects of our business. So I know we're spending a ton of time on that third question in particular and really drilling in to figure out how do we help customers increase that score and ultimately increase their, their margins and actually the market share that they're taking back in that, in that particular part of their business. So why don't we dive into the whiteboard and actually look at this in more detail. Great idea, David. This is one of my favorite topics. All right, Mike, hitting the whiteboard now, let's talk about how we're specifically helping customers win back that aftermarket business. As we talked about earlier, they're rating themselves a three, and so let's, let's get in and hit the model here. Let's go. Good, David. What we're going to be talking about really is improving what we're calling the data IQ of our customers. What we mean is fully leveraging everything that's available in data to drive higher performance and value. Got it. Okay. So let's, let's start with where customers typically are today. Again, we work with a lot of organizations. They tend to start in this first box. Describe this first box for me. Basically, what we're talking about here is a reasonably passive view into the historical data, or what we would call a rear view, mirror facing look into data. You may take some recent sales history and use that to decide where best to go after some of your parts and service. Got it. So I would call this reactive. They're being yeah. pretty reactive with their with their with their data. Okay, good. Stage two. This is a big leap forward, and we'll move forward into what is called big data here. What I'm going to do is basically take, again, a maybe backward looking view, but I'm going to bring in all of the available data. So I'm looking at big data, 100% available inside my enterprise. What I'm going to look at is past product sales and correlations to my aftermarket parts and services and consumable sales. And what I'll see in many cases is there are areas where I'm performing pretty well and there are areas where there are huge gaps. So right away, I'm kicking out recommendations out of here on how to close these gaps and drive higher value. And that's the key. So we're jumping from what I hear you say as being really kind of reactive on this side and now we're moving to much being a much more proactive. We're actually giving recommendations and not just looking at the data. Very much so. Yep. Jump to three for me. Okay, so in three, we're taking that internal data if fully leveraged but I'm, I'm bringing in external data from outside sources. These may be industry benchmark sources. I'm also starting to refine the internal data to look at specific end use markets, where my products are going and how they're being used in applications by customers. And this is a much better predictor of what the aftermarket could and should look like. So once again, I'm gonna look for how am I performing among the ones that I'm hitting where I have tight correlations there to what I would have expected, and where are the big gaps and what am I gonna do about those? Driving higher value. Got it, okay, so take me to the fourth step. Finally, for those companies, and many are moving in this direction that have connected products and are out in 
a world where they can receive signals back from the data. Now I can be very, very precise and prescriptive about what that product is doing. I can know things like its remaining useful life, its mean time to failure, its mean time to repair, and I can be very prescriptive through sales back to the customer about what to do next. So Mike, if I look at the work that we're doing with customers in this area, we're helping them drive their improvements using their data, get their data IQ up, and actually help them win back this business in the aftermarket. I feel like this is really the, some of the most important work we've ever done for our customers. Yes, David, that's certainly true for me. You know, when I think about accessibility of these solutions we're talking about and the time to value and the gains the companies will make as they make this journey, I can't think of anything more important that we've been doing.